sure we are live. Oh, ugh, can't find my brain. My brain. Aha. There we go. Make sure we have sound. Ew. Okay, am I hearing sound okay? Yes. All right, getting a little feedback, so that's all right. There. There we go. Okay, now to edit this bugger. I'm not exactly live yet, but we are getting there. my computer to stop freezing up. Oh, for Pete's sake. Come on. There you go. Good computer. Watch page. There. All right. Looks like we are okay. So, um, I'm going to be having to kind of roll back and forth to keep an eye on the live chat. But, and to see the picture I have up on the screen to make sure I have this right. But this is Christina Blackfeather and uh, today's live stream going to try to do a couple of hours here before work um, to um, sorry I should be getting the camera while I'm yapping. Um, I'm going to try to get some more work done on this big boy here. Um, he's part of uh, the um, fundraising for scholarship program that the Channel Digital Hammurabi, Dr. Josh Bowen and his wife Megan are doing, she'll be a doctor soon too, um, for scholarships for doctoral students um, who are studying uh, ancient Assyrian and Hebrew and stuff like that. So, um, this, this painting will be going off uh, on auction to help raise funds. So we have a couple of guardians for our painting stream tonight. Um, my old bronze dragon, Tarinth, that I brought out, brought to life in 1992, I do believe. Never got her finished. And there was things I could have done, like arched her neck a lot more and stuff, but she was done with uh, lost wax technique. And so you had to have all sorts of sprues and vents and everything um, just to get bronze to flow in a complete circle so it would fill all parts of the mold. 
um, that was made off of the wax. And that was a lot of fun to make. Um, I don't work in bronze anymore because this is really expensive. And I dropped this in a college bathroom and actually wrecked the floor. <laughs> she, her tip went into the floor and kind of broke some of it. It's still broken in that spot too. And then our other guardian tonight is Daenerys on Drogon, because you can't paint a dragon without having another dragon present. So yeah, this was a Mother's Day gift last year from Hubby. Um, yeah, the Funko Pop, except their detail on this dragon is just phenomenal. And this little guy will even hold my cell phone for a camera. He's pretty cool. I shouldn't call him a little guy. He'll probably turn into some big giant beast in the middle of the night on me and chew everything up. Mainly me. Okay, we're going to zoom in. And let me get this camera in a good spot where I want to work. And I'm sorry for the bobbing that's going on here. Um, the camera actually is my cell phone and it's on one of those holders that's on this gigantically long arm that... If you sneeze wrong, it wobbles. And tonight's drink is water in my Wonder Woman cup. I had to have this covered because there's many times I have dipped my brushes in the water I was gonna drink. All right, so I think we're gonna go down into this area right here. is a little bit different than what we had before. So I'm looking at several different photos and this is an area where there's another crack right here in this structure. The cracks here might have a little different colors. But you can see last time I had done a little bit of grayish in the cracks inside the brick. So this is going to be another spot where the brick has cracked apart and I'm trying to do these cracks just to make it um, more interesting. So let's get some colors together, shall we? Old messy palette again. I'm surprised I can see anything I'm doing. <laughs> I'm going to do a little bit of white on that. Using up the last of my paints of these anyway. It's a little bit of yellow in there. I'm just using a generic uh, canary or dandelion yellow. I have raw sienna, which is Liquitex soft body. This paint tube is falling apart on me because it's pretty old. But right now the texture is like a good old oil paint, so I'm actually liking using this. And this bottle's pretty shot, I'll tell you. But I love the texture of it. We'll toss in a little black. Now these are the colors I have used throughout this whole thing. So we've got black, white, yellow, the raw sienna, and the other one I'm going to add is Apple Barrel, which you can find at Michael's or uh, Walmart. Um, it's the Kiwi color. And Kiwi seems to work pretty nicely for what I need for this. And it doesn't take a lot. I would have painted this earlier, but I worked tonight and yeah, need to, needed to get some sleep and some housework done. All right, so size brush I'm using is a size two for this because this is not really high detail stuff that I need to do. Uh, just a regular, especially, actually, since I'm doing some scrubby, this is the same size, but this brush is a little more abused. And let's go through that first instead of destroying new brushes, shall we? Let's see if I can bring the mouse a little closer. And I need to take a look at his detail. All right. Uh, 
Uh, music is in the description below. Later I will um, add uh, my Instagram and my uh, Discord. Second, I had a pink chunk of old paint get in the way there. All right, can't go one painting stream without getting paint all over myself. <laughs> it's a regular thing. So in these areas, I had a mix of the brown in here too. Brown, white, black, and a little bit of yellow. So we'll continue with that. So it's not too gray. Sometimes too, I, oh, dang it, the phone froze. Oh, God bless it. Really? Let me guess, no camera. It froze solid. Freaking hate YouTube. All right, let's see if I can recover this. Okay, I might have gotten it. I got it. I got it. Oh, sweet. Okay, I might have gotten it. I got it. Yay. It's still frozen on my side. Oh, it wasn't froze. <laughs> I thought it had filmed where I was pointing with this brush or something. That brush has been in the way the whole time. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry, gods of YouTube. I apologize. <laughs> oh, my gosh, how embarrassing. Okay, so we have a crack coming this way, so we're going to continue this crack down. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be pretty. Oh, I swear. Because this... This will freeze up on me occasionally, you know, if there's a phone call coming through or something like that. Okay. I want to keep the crack between the brick right here. Now, do I have any other cracks on this thing? Not in that section of tile. But we do have something interesting that happened over in this corner. So we're gonna kind of mess with that a bit. know where some of the car carving or the inlay work on the tile had actually uh, chipped off. So we're down to the bare yellow brick underneath. So we're going to duplicate that and we're going to go over the spot. Thank you. 
some of the things that I have accomplished today, which I'm really surprised, is I made a from scratch uh, chicken alfredo, which we had some of that. I have to box up the leftovers yet because we're having friends over for gaming Saturday, so we want to make sure there were some leftovers, and that way hubby has some food while I'm sleeping tomorrow. And uh, then um, I had a few hour fight with my gaming computer trying to get Optifine to install. And one thing I found out is that if you uh, try to install Java just from the install button without specifically looking for something, like 64-bit Java maybe, you're going to get 32-bit installed, whether you want it or not. So um, I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get Optifine to try and work. And of course I couldn't get Life in the Woods to install either. Well, Life in the Woods, once I got the 64-bit issue taken care of, um, seemed to work fine, but the problem there was that it um, didn't, uh, it ran once and then once I tried to get it to adjust where the safe file was, because I don't want everything safe to my boot drive, it turned around and decided not to work and is trying to reinstall and of course can't reinstall anything. So frustration continued. And this went on for a few hours and all of a sudden um, well I tried to get uh, Optifine to recognize that my Minecraft was in a different directory and because again same issue I don't want everything on the boot drive it's just like certain amount of gigs on the SSD and um, so then I still had to specify the roaming directory anyway because it was just being a pill in three quarters. And all of a sudden it starts reading where the save files are going and just started randomly working. And I'm like, yay, I'm going to just enjoy this. So then it's trying to figure out which shader pack worked the best because I want to be able to display in shaders for um, the 50th episode of Dragon Coast. And I did manage to get Silders to run, and it looks pretty good. I am very happy. All I'm doing here is just randomly making a mess on the palette. <laughs> trying to make sure that the direction still stays the same for where the scales should be going on the figure. Like uh, animal has fur to deal with the directions, any type of lizard or snake even, anything like that, there's going to be specific directions that the scales go as well to form with the body. So that's what we're going to continue with here. And I'm doing more impressionistic again because I just don't want it to be absolutely precise. right there. Tone that down. Good. All right. We're going to look at the next section. Look 
this is very little detail coming along right here in this section. out just a little bit. Okay. So we started talking soft again. All right. And that's regular brick coming this way. out so my left arm is feeling it right now from where I did the second rotator tear. I'm pretty tired of that but I have certain exercises I do that help me rehabilitate the right when I tore that fine. I'm going to have to cancel my health insurance until I can get it through work. Because I'm just not making my rent if I pay for that. I'm not making other bills if I pay for that because it's so much per month. So, luckily my doctor renewed all my prescriptions so I can just get them get my pills off to pay out of pocket. But right now it's what I've got. I just trained with at a children's hospital yesterday for my job and um, I should hopefully next week start my actual full time instead of just picking up shifts. But either way, I have to be at full time hours for 60 days and um, so because I've been picking up shifts that'll get me much closer to getting insurance and then I get other benefits I'll get 401k back and stuff like that so I'm pretty excited tried lifting yesterday with somebody uh, watching so that I could make sure I could lift and that worked out okay even with the rotator problem right now so I won't be lifting over 30 pounds at all so that's good Boy, it's been, since October, it has been just a long, ugly road. See the paint's still just a little bit wet, so it's actually blending pretty well. Just keep going over it with wet paint just to get it to blend in. And again, try to keep the strokes in line with the direction of the scales. I 
I'll toss a little green in there too. to have like a green nodule right here. There we go, that's better. Hey, Paranor. <laughs> oh gosh, well it's enough weather down here because we're gonna be getting um, more snow. I got up to find a work. I got Sildur's shaders running. It only took about three hours to fight with the new computer. Oh, yuck. More snow at the start of the week. Yeah, I get to have it, like, in the next couple days, I think. Oh, that mirrored hall looks so pretty with the shaders. Oh, my gosh. It is just awesome. right there and this actually needs to be a little more white right here so I accidentally toss more black into it how about that Doing this a little different because there's a textural change up from stuff being broken off in the picture. This is one of the more worn pieces from the Ishtar Gate. This is the one that's in um, the Detroit Museum of Art. I'm not copying it exactly, but. Get a little more yellow right there. More yellow there. All right, another chuck. Sorry, stuck the paintbrush in my mouth. Hey, hey, four seventeen. How are you doing? Uh, sometime this weekend, I'm going to try to do my last building episode number 49 and not do, I don't know if I'll do a live stream or not because hubby's got gaming going on Saturday, which is usually my streaming day. And if I don't oversleep tomorrow, maybe I'll do it tomorrow, but I want to get episode, uh, 50 going which is all going to be exploring it, it with the shaders on and then I'm going to put the uh, Minecraft mod up in uh, on my Google Docs for people to download the module or the um, world I should say so they can explore episode 50 a little bit Okay. <sighs> Keep grabbing the wrong colors here. A little more yellow. Okay. 
Okay. Or I'll take a look at the comments in a moment here. Just trying to get this while some of the paint is still wet. Too. It's kind of bugging me a little bit right there. there. I'm using very thin washes of paint right now, even though it doesn't look like it. Because that'll, um, that allows just enough coverage to color correct. And then some of it ends up being thicker. And I just want to be able to color correct a little bit. And it will blend a little that way, but it's not the variation of techniques. Let's grab a little more white. Drop the paint everywhere. Luckily, it wasn't open. <laughs> I've done that too. I've made some serious messes. <laughs> okay. Gotta be a little more of the gray right here too, because this is where some of it had worn off. Okay. Oh yes. <laughs> Pernor, you're double a one. Okay, let's close that preview of that one. What does this one look like? It's still kind of messy there too. That's all right. I'm just looking at uh, preview sections of this uh, of the mosaic here. a pretty good site for this. Where I get, um, can get images of, uh, of the one in Detroit. Okay, so that's more yellow and then this section's more brown. Let's get the crack in here. I'm painting the dragon's crack. <laughs> oh, dear gods. So sorry, Marduk. Didn't mean to do that. Wait, yes, I did. Okay, so there's going to be a crack that way. And then this is more yellow right here. Or some of it has come off. I'll come in there with the black to shade pretty quick here. Sorry, talking soft again. Talk to myself a lot. <laughs> there we go. That actually looks pretty decent. This little black in here. Get that brick line in there. And let's 
see, so that was more brown that side. Okay. <laughs> Dragon crack is so <laughs> I like that. back into the brown. I started what I started a while ago watching a Minecrafter it goes by mythical sausage and I watch him while I work out and uh, he was today today's episode he was doing um, that I was watching anyway. He was doing an automatic fish house, which looked pretty cool. But then he's saying, well, we're going to poop this here and poop that there. And I'm like, dude, don't poop. Don't poop in your fish house. <laughs> and so now I'm playing with brown paint. And I was like, no, I didn't need that. <laughs> like, no, sausage, don't poop there. <laughs> just wrong. I'm still trying to keep that three-dimensional thing happening right here, so we'll blend that in. Trying to get that there. Okay. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. I, oh, I should have some coffee. Live chat of uh, Pixel Rift stream today. Okay, <laughs> have have fun with uh, making dinner there. Four seventeen. Hi Nebulana. How you doing? throw a little brown in here even though that's not what it looked like on the original it just looks too too clean I don't want it to look that clean that's gonna need a little more gray right here I think again same reason even though the original it is a very rich brown in this part of the tile. I want it to look more like that. Okay. All right. Further down the leg we go.
Yeah, I'm. Oh, I'm watching uh, uh, his uh, survival series right now. Oh yeah, I watched the Game of Thrones trailer. Um. Oh, I wonder if Arya's running from the uh, the dead in Winterfell in the catacombs. I'm so curious. Yeah, I'm not so sure that's a faceless man. I, yeah, I, I'm wondering if that was the dead of Winterfell. He might show up. I wondered if he was the faceless man, actually. I haven't seen the Good Omens trailer, and I haven't seen the Tolkien trailer. Hubby and I have been watching Lucifer together, so I've been watching a lot of that. Okay, so the next leg is just yellowed. Okay. Or the next piece. One piece at a time. And it didn't cost me a dime. You'll notice me when I come through your town. First public solo at eight years old was bluegrass. <laughs> I still get a little bit of that twang in my voice. <laughs> some dimension right there. Oh, it sounds like Thomas Wraith is yowling. So Hubby's yowling back at him. Now hubby's shouting, what the hell is this? <laughs> Sorry, YouTube gods, for partially swearing, but it's a place, okay? <laughs> it's not a swear word, it's a place. I mean, good grief, there's a show on TV called Hell's Kitchen, you know? Broken up, not too straight. A little war. I'm just, because I'm changing the angle of the brush and how I'm doing it, it's actually breaking up the texture because it's showing different texture in that section. Yeah. That might be, I don't know. Um Yeah, either way, something from the dead's coming back. It's a little bit more that's too clean right here. Let's fix this.
I'm taking some liberties right here at the moment. Okay. Now the next one's gonna be a little bit more gray to brown and not so much yellow in there. And then I accidentally got a whole bunch of black in it. Good job. More brown paint. <laughs> I'll be surprised if I end up running out of this raw sienna Liquitex. I'm probably going to have to buy some more. <sighs> Come on out of that bottle, you bugger. Ah, oh, there we go. That stuff's getting thick. Ancient paint, ancient paint. <laughs> and the cat's trying to get under the door. Oscar! Stop it! And I know it's you, white bugger. That was too many claws to be Wraith. <laughs> For anyone who hasn't met Oscar Six Toes, he's got six toes on each foot. There's a crack here. Okay, I actually kind of like that. That looks pretty cool, I like that. <laughs> All of a sudden the cat disappears from clawing under my art room door. I've got, I've got celery in a pot here right now that kind of just failed to really take root and some of it grew so I'm gonna trim that off tomorrow so I can eat it but he likes to chew on plants so I really can't have him in here and then Wraith gets into everything I'm buffering oh yeah Oscar wants mom Oscar really wants mummy. Mummy? Are oh, you want mummy? Okay. No, that's actually pretty. I like that brown like that. It's not as authentic, but I really like that. Okay. That looks pretty nice. I'm going to have to move the camera down or the phone down a little bit pretty quick here. Yep, I am going to have to move the camera. Sorry for the wiggles, guys. There we go. At least if, you know, I do this to a webcam, it freezes everything up. My iPhone, I can just move it around, and most of the time, unless a call's coming in, my iPhone doesn't care. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I know the phones are way overpriced, but this thing's been pretty good and solid for me, so I can't complain too much. Every webcam I've tried, I've had so many fights with. Um, if I try recording on 
this computer here in my art room. I get no sound or it's so bad you can't hear me. Um, I don't know what to do with it. So I got this really decent webcam and microphone and I can't even use it. It just annoys the crap out of me. This makes me so mad. more yellow in here I think Could blend that out a little bit I have some difference between this part of the brick and the other one a little white in here too There we go, much better. And of course I'll be blending some this way too once I get the blue tiles in. So for right now, it's just working on the figure because that's gonna be easier for me. <laughs> I like that. And that does need more yellow though. Yellow and white, this way actually. What's really fun about that episode of Doctor Who with the little boy in the gas mask is, um, you know, my mom was a child in Germany in World War II and um, at the tail end of it. But there were always tales about how in World War I there was a little, there was this ghost, this, this child that would walk around with the, wearing a gas mask. And it was just a ghost that would wander. And so that story from Doctor Who actually came from a real bit of lore which kind of made it all the more creepy, really. Because I remember my mother telling me about that when I was younger, you know. She wasn't shy about telling me about ghosts and things like that. I mean, there were things I was trained to do on a spiritual level, you know, because we did a lot of reading of Edgar Casey and from Danikin and all of this stuff, you know, so um, that that was a significant part of my life. And so stories like that probably were not the best things in my formative years. Because <laughs> it seems some awful shit. <laughs> Pardon my language. And, you know, probably some of that was probably influenced by the stories that I was being told. You know, now that I'm older and, and have that bit of an outlook. Although I still believe in ghosts and hauntings and stuff. It's just like questioning what did I actually see, you know. And what was just imagination. And, um, but that one... When I saw that episode of Doctor Who, I was like, oh, holy crap. That was just scary. Boy, that's some really torn up tile right there. Uh-huh. Okay. So I'm... 
There's no cracks in the foot there. It's just next to it. And the cracks actually get more gray as it's going down, which I didn't quite look close enough. So we're going to have to adjust some of these. The lines between the bricks get more gray. Oh, yeah. Okay, that looks fine. I like that. All right. I'm going to go with a mix of yellow and brown base coat on the next. another dragon crack right here. <laughs> I'm sorry, Marduk. <laughs> My apologies. I go and I say the dragon's cute and then I'm playing with its cracks. I could have said crack singular there, but we all get the idea. And I was, you know, I was going to try to be perfectly accurate with this, but there's just no way. But there's so many of these dragons on the Ishtar Gate that you can't, you, unless you go to exactly the same site, you're not going to get the same image. And then some of the images you find on the web are the ones that Saddam Hussein actually had uh, re reconstructed. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I've seen too many things in my career, too, that is kind of like, you know, is it? What exactly did I see in, and, uh, so I, you know, I, th there's things I believe in that are probably woo to other people, but I don't try to get people to fall in line with my thinking that way either. It's my path. It's not theirs, you know. If they're blatantly wrong, though, and it's going to cause somebody else harm, then I'm going to speak up. That's just the way it is. I mean, it's one thing if you're, you're believing something, but as soon as you try to use it to control somebody else or cause harm to someone else, or it's going to cause harm even though you don't believe it is, like not getting medical care for a kid with pneumonia and they die from it unnecessarily... You know, I'm going to have a fit. Let's take a look at these toes. Oh yeah, anti-vax is a big one. Well, it's like one of the other things that I found too. Um, and I can't believe I'm gonna say this. I somewhat agree with Von Helton on this. Um, now, he is one of the most hateful pagans I've ever encountered um, as far as hating people of a certain religious group um, 
but he turns around and he says that he won't, um, he thinks that giving the God's names is disrespectful and that it is humanizing them to an extent. Now, of course, I, you know, I think we created all of them. We gave them power and that includes Yahweh and Yahushua and stuff. I think we're the ones that created them and gave them the power because we allowed them to have rule in our lives. And, you know, in some ways, uh, we've allowed the religions that formed around them to control our lives. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that their name, the gods are becoming nameless to me, but it's more like they're becoming except for a certain few that I've had visions of over the years, um, they're kind of becoming like faceless to me and more aspects of personality than actual entities. And so I kind of, kind of agree with him a bit on that, which is just, yeah, you know, a broken watch is right twice a day. <laughs> you know? But, uh, yeah, it's just one of those things that he actually made me think about that. It's like, really? You know? And, of course, the power that we've granted is, is them is the fact that we've allowed their religions to take over our lives in political places and even in healthcare and things like that. And it's kind of frightening what we've done to allow that, you know. Here we go, working on claws, guys. can still see over there. I'm going to move my little cup of water here. Yeah. Yeah, I... They sound very human, because it's always, um, like, even R and Ra and some of those turn around and say, well, you know, why is it that your God has the traits that you agree with, you know, or why, why does it believe exactly like you do? And then the next person uh, that believes in the same God has different ideas and yet God completely agrees with them. And, you know, you can't get one consistent answer. So... It's, it's something I'm kind of exploring further. And I don't even know, I wouldn't even necessarily say that they, they have power in my life really. That I've given them that kind of power. It's more like for me, it's an acknowledgement. Because I've learned over the years that I'm the one who's made my own power. I've made my own way. And despite a lot of hardship and everything else. I think my belief had given me strength. And strength to keep going, but I don't know. And and I don't want to give up the acknowledgement of it because of some of the things that I have seen was pretty darn special to me. And you know what? That's that is what it is. But I don't go asking for things other than maybe strength to keep going with something and 
you know, that things will turn around, but stuff doesn't happen if I don't go and take, you know, jump at an opportunity to that shows itself. Um, I'm the one who has to do the actions. And it doesn't involve making an Elder Scroll like Vaughn does. Yeah, the humans love a story and we're a communal animal uh, that need herdsmen. We just have to be mature enough to give our power to better herdsmen. Yeah. Emotional manipulation, one of the reins of culture, and power is given and taken. Each of us is molded by the culture we find ourselves in. It, yeah, exactly. But I was one even in in uh, middle school and high school. I always wanted to do um, get into cultural anthropology. There was too many things I wanted to get into. I swear I could not make up my mind for the life of me. But cultural anthropology and how. Um, Cultures formed religions and how religions formed cultures. I, that had always fascinated me. Even in, you know, when I was 12 and 13, I thought that was just so intriguing. I was thinking way ahead of my time, I guess. <laughs> oh, I'm liking that. I am liking that. Oh, sweet. And yes, his claws actually on some of the tiles are a little white. I'm just loading up the brush with paint here and doing one stroke. And we're getting a texture in the claw. I like that. Yeah, we make decisions, not choices, mix of choice and compulsion, and we perform acts of will. The human mind is an individual subjective and extension of a communal storehouse of knowledge built upon the shoulders of what came before in every way. Yeah. And for me, it wasn't even it wasn't all Casey and Fandanakin and stuff either. Is I also got big healthy doses of Carl Sagan. <laughs> bubbles and bubbles and not all bubbles are the same. Nope, they're not. Oh, I like that. I am very, very happy with that. Why I love the internet, it brings all the bubbles together, all our ideas. Yeah, for the good, bad, or, you know, not not so good. <laughs> it depends. We get the nut buggers along with the, with the uh, smart thoughts, you know. Okay, so it looks like my curve to the belly is going right here. So all of this underneath is going to be blue tiles. Which these, there's a lot of cracks in these tiles. Oh, let's see, where do I want to go next? I'm probably thinking up in here. I'll just keep working. What time have we got? Oh, 7 o'clock only. Yay! I've only been painting an hour. Oh my gosh, I've gotten a lot done. Okay, so... So, did that one section of tile. Okay, we'll just continue with the next one. History demonstrates only progress happens when bubbles come together. Oh gosh, that just made me think of Powerpuff Girls. Oh, <laughs> 
my brain just went into this weird place. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm allowed to be slightly crazy, right? I should think so. Okay, we're going to go with more of the yellows here for the base coat. I'm laying the paint on pretty thick. Okay, good. I'm in a good spot with the camera. I'm just bringing sewing with tonight to work. I actually need to go downstairs in my sewing stuff because I have to make um, little itty bitty tiny, teeny, teeny uh, cloth diapers and care sets and everything for a the little kid's stuffed dachshund that's about that big. <laughs> Danny, Danny the dachshund is going to have his own little cloth diapers and little blue jean pants to go over. To. <laughs> and this was my idea. Because the kid and I, the one day I was, I said something, it came out, no, we don't need diapers for Danny. And that's, it just went from there. So I should find fabrics this weekend to bring with to work on that stuff. Get those done too. Too many projects. But I am getting the projects done that need to be getting done, so. Let's see if we can mix up some more here. A little more yellow. It's pretty amazing what you can do with only five colors. Of course, my palette will switch once I get to working on the background tiles. blending in here. <laughs> yeah, until some emotional child comes along and ruins it for everyone. Why the internet, which is all of us, is important. We're a worldwide herd now, and the net is our worldwide forum. Yes, yes, exactly. Our... Our world has kind of shrunk and expanded at the same time. I mean, as far as, I guess, 
we've you know, we've grown on how much knowledge we can gain and how many people we can communicate with and everything. But it makes us more aware of everything that goes on. Our soap bubble has gotten that much tighter, I guess. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave that one at that. Bring these scales in. See what I'm doing, that's good. Okay, there's a crack right in the middle of that. Of that one? Or the crack a little bit more straight, it looks like. No, I got that. I got it in there. Thank you, Rachel, and welcome aboard. Um, this is the Dragon of Marduk from the Ishtar Gate in Babylon. And this particular one I'm working on, um, it was originally a base relief in a, done with a bunch of brickwork on the gate, and there's like dragons and lions and and bulls and all sorts of things on this gate all over the place so there's probably about 50 of these dragons or something like that so the one i'm kind of mock copying i'm doing a little more impressionistic um there is a panel of one of these dragons from the actual gate itself that is in detroit in the museum of art and so I'm going with that one. So a lot of the tiles are crumbled and broken and stuff like that. So I'm trying to do that sort of thing with this piece. And this is uh, for um, the channel Digital Hammurabi. Um, Dr. Josh Bowen and his wife Megan, they always have this one of this dragon or another one in the background on their green screen. And so this actual painting will be au auctioned off uh, for a scholarship fund that they are um, putting up for um, doctoral students of Assyriology and ancient Hebrew uh, language studies and stuff. And uh, they had helped me out uh, when I had uh, a GoFundMe going up before my surgery and after my surgery. So uh, 
I had time off and couldn't make bills, so they didn't even know me. They just out of the blue started helping. So that's why I'm doing this. I can't afford to actually pay them back, but um, my husband and I both decided, you know, that uh, with this one, we're going to get photos done by a professional photographer first of this painting so we can get a print of it ourselves. But we're going to mail it off to the auction winner. So that'll be our donation. And this canvas is 36 inches by 24 inches, so it's really big. It's not going to be cheap mailing this thing to anybody. <laughs> so I'm trying to mimic the brickwork as much as I possibly can. It's been a fun project. And eventually this guy here will be needle felted because he's, well, he's kind of cute too. I'm going to have to needle felt him as somebody you can actually, you know, carry around and cuddle a little bit, I guess. So my painting isn't going to be exactly accurate to the one particular panel from the gate. Um, just because there's so many different panels and different photos and... I'm just doing my interpretation, but it's, he's coming out pretty cool. I like him. And he is called the Dragon of Marduk. A lot of people make the mistake of saying he is Marduk, but I don't remember if Marduk was one of the gods of Babylon, um, but he had slain the dragon. So it, this is not Marduk himself. Oh yeah, there's some nice people out there. Hi, uh, yeah. I might have to break down some really big boxes and just wrap this thing up. Um, I had to do that with a canvas of two fighting winged horses that I had sold years ago. And, um, but the biggest project I ever sent was a six foot long walking stick to a lawyer in Virginia. And so there were several tubes of cardboard around that thing. And that had fighting dragons that I had wood burned into it. And I had actually, at the time, I was playing Ultima Online, and the guy traded me um, his tower in Ultima for this walking stick. And at the time, real life cash those towers were going for about 750 450 to 750 depending on the location so i got a lot of money for that stick <laughs> cuz then after that i was one of those that i was selling supplies for cash or selling crafted good for cash and then i would take that buy gold and then go to these small people's houses out in the middle of nowhere, buy off their supplies, use it to make the goods, and then turn around and sell the goods and do over and over again. Um, so I ended up buying a furnace, or not a furnace, a washer and dryer for the house, and, you know, real life house and stuff like that. I did pretty good up until eBay said they weren't gonna allow that sort of thing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but those were you know the, mailing that walking stick off <laughs> was just such a challenge to get that thing in a box and I'm going to be stuck with the same thing here I just know it like I tried um, 
I put up one of my needle felt dragons on Craigslist today just to try and get some bills made because I'm not working full time yet. And I said specifically in it that it's going to have to be either they meet with me somewhere or something like that because there's no way I'm mailing a four and a half long foot dragon um, in a box. It'd be like 50 or 60 bucks shipping for the weight that's on that dragon. Chris already got my share of scammers today too. I'm like, will you take a cashier's check and I'll send my mover? Some people. <laughs> Some people's kids. <laughs> Yeah, I usually do the uh, postal service. And I've got lots of bubble wrap. Lots and lots of bubble wrap. Okay, so back to the picture. Uh, okay, so that's that one. Sorry, just talking to myself for a moment here. Oh, okay. Oh, Cecilia is a really big dragon. There, it, there just would be no way that that would be cheap for me to send that. And other needle felted pieces, her size and not even needle felted. Some of them are just posable dolls and, and posable stuffed uh, dragons and stuff will go for. Um, they'll be selling on eBay for anywhere up to, you know, from 600 to $2,000, depending if they're, you know, what kind of machinations are inside of them and stuff. And I've only got her at 450 so if she goes, she goes. I'm listing some other stuff this weekend, too, just to try and make ends meet. But I just love it. You get these people who are like, well, I'll, I'll send you a cashier's check, and then I'll have my mover come and pick this up. I'm like, what, what? Oh, what bank is your cashier's check going to be from? Well, this bank? Oh, that's right. That's about 10 minutes from me. I can meet you at the bank and you can cut it there and then, you know, I can, then you can get the dra the dragon and the painting right there. Oh, no, I'm, uh, I'm not in town right now. Can I just mail it to you? And I'm like, no, um... I'd rather actually see the check cut so I know where it, you know, know that it's legit. And all of a sudden they never contact me back. It's funny. Then what's really entertaining is when you get the people that are on Craigslist and stuff that'll sit there and try to dicker you down by being just nasty to you I I sold sold a dulcimer a four string dulcimer and I wasn't asking a lot of money for it e either and this one lady's like well I live at the other end of the state and I'm like well you know if I can't drive up there for this if there's any way that uh you know, I'll just try to sell it down here and stuff. And then all of a sudden, you know, she's got a brother or something that's down here that could get it. Okay, fine. Had very detailed photos of it. And it had, some, you know, it was really old wood. So it had some cracks in the wood, but still sounded really nice and everything. And uh, then... She turns around and says, well, I'm only going to offer you five. He said it's only worth $5, and that's all we're going to offer you because all the wood has to be replaced. 
and I texted her back and I said, wait, what? The whole instrument is made out of wood. What do you mean all the wood has to be replaced? <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not letting it go for five bucks. <coughs> Got it sold to another guy who came over, picked it up, played it right here, and he he tuned it up and he just started playing. And he was a mandolin player from um, one of the Renaissance festivals he attends. And he does bluegrass and stuff, and he really and restored some instruments and stuff. And things sounded fantastic with crappy strings on it, and and. Uh, just brought a lot of happiness to our house at the same time the way he was playing he was good and um so he bought it took it home and texted me later how happy he was with it and he's recording with it so it's like well <laughs> another one had a fit over a 40 dollar rim with a perfectly inflated beautiful perfect tire on it for a specific car um, they wanted to only pay me $25 when I was asking 50 because they'd have to take the tire off the rim. I'm like, no. And then they got really nasty and started threatening me. <laughs> Later, some other guy goes, oh, hey, I had that car. I need a rim and a tire. Do you still have it? And he paid me what I was asking. Oh, it's like people just get so darn nasty. It's funny sometimes. And then they all try to pull this, oh, I need my mover thing to come get this. They'll even say that on a child's violin. I had that one happen too. Very expensive child's violin. My son outgrew it. And uh, so I had put... Facebook didn't have their marketplace at the time, so I put it up on Craigslist. And somebody was going to send me a money order and have their mover come and get it. And I'm like, a mover? Wait, what? And they will sell, they'll sit there and they copy and paste this stuff. Because you'll get like seven different responses all saying exactly the same thing. And it's just hilarious. They're all retarded. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, I've seen the Reddit choosing beggars type thing. I, yeah, the guy, the guy with the uh, with the dulcimer really liked that. It was so fun to have somebody just come in and start. There's something special about this a person just showing up and playing music in your house on acoustic on an instrument. My son's first violin instructor. If you look up uh, Crazy Violinist Twin Cities, it'll come up with a uh, Ukrainian man named Taras Umrish. Um, uh, and he used to perform at Living Word Christian Center, but he was my son's first violin instructor. And the video that they have on YouTube of him, the hair is just flying off that violin bow. I mean, that guy can play. Seriously. Freaking play. He eventually moved away, so we got a different instructor for my son. But he'd sit there, and he'd play the most amazing music right in my apartment, you know? And... Right with me sitting there, and I mean, I performed with him on stage, and and stuff like that too but it was it, it's such an experience there were times the man brought me to tears just listening to him and there's there's nothing like it there really isn't
It was pretty hilarious though, was when my son was 12 or 13, and Taras came over and was doing lessons, and it was a beautiful summer day out. So they stood on the apartment balcony doing the lesson because it was just gorgeous outside. And my son's a pretty handsome, handsome guy now. And he was a pretty handsome young boy too. I'm not joking and I'm not being just mama there. Um, so here he's out with his instructor on the balcony playing I think he, at the time he was practicing, Devil went down to Georgia. And all these girls from the apartment complex come gathering around down below the balcony. And they're screaming, Michael, Michael. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I'm going to beat all of them off with a stick. <laughs> it was just the funniest darn thing. That complex isn't the same anymore. A lot of crime has moved in there and stuff since I moved out. But it used to be like, you know, I'd be sitting outside at, the, they had these picnic tables set up, and I'd be sitting outside wood carving and stuff. And there were other, other musical groups that'd be, go out and practice on the summer nights outside and a somewhere mix of rap and singing and stuff and they were so good and they do everything a cappella and it was so fun it was just such a neat neat neighborhood at the time not anymore <laughs> and it's been like five six years since I moved out of there and I guess it's gone downhill pretty bad <laughs> The crime rate has gone up pretty bad. I've got a little detail up here too. Kind of missed that spot. There we go. That's better. Oh yeah, whiskey bards are good. I used to play 12 string guitar myself, but with all the hand injuries and everything I've had, I can't anymore. Although I picked up a guitar yesterday at the children's hospital I had orientation at and started playing um, House Carpenter, which is like 15th century originally. Joan Baez made it popular, but um, I used to sing that one a lot. I still sing quite a bit. And uh, I'd love to get back in with a choir, but not anytime soon just because life. But, uh, yeah, the um, House Carpenter uh, was one of my first pieces I learned uh, play with my guitar teacher, who was also my writing teacher in fifth grade, because they didn't have classes for, for me anymore, because I had came from another school and transferred, so I was way beyond their reading program. was... 15 students in total like that so we had one instructor that was pretty cool and he also taught guitar because he heard me sing one day and I took it up from there and he got me hooked on Joan Baez and stuff <laughs> shame on him <laughs> but uh yeah house carpenter is one of my favorites Well met, well met, my own true love. Well met, well met, cried he. Oh, I've just returned from the salt, salt sea. All for the love of thee. Well, 
I could have married the king's daughter dear, and she would have married me. But I have forsaken her crowns of gold, all for the love of thee. Now, there's, there's like 21 verses to, or something like that to that song, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing. <laughs> Watch me get flagged by YouTube. You're using somebody else's recording again, because that's happened to me before. Oh, fun. I sing along to pretty much anything in the car. <laughs> Where are we on this dragon here? Okay, so I need a little bit more gray in this spot. Yeah, I had to go with uh, YouTube's copyright-free music here because... They like to have conniption fits. So that's what you're hearing in the background is off of their free playlist for creators. For content creators. And there's several channels that, you know, allow their music to be used free of charge. So that's what I grabbed. But... YouTube did, uh, I had to, um, way back when I first got going, I had to, uh, uh, file, a, um, oh God, what do you call it? They flagged me for saying that I had copied somebody else's recording of Scarborough Fair when I was... I videotaped myself actually singing it, I mean, right into the camera. And um, so I had to appeal that. It's like, no, 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 that's me singing. It's my voice. Take a look at this video. Same person singing. Um, so they reversed that decision. <laughs> I was like, I'm just waiting for them to do that again on one of these videos. It would be kind of funny. Yeah, and kind of not really at the same time. I mean, I was pretty flattered. I might have to get a little bit more white. I think so. Making some actual headway on these panels. I just have to make sure to keep an eye on my time because I have to get ready for work yet. I shouldn't complain. Don't have the full time hours yet. I should not be complaining. Just once I get into doing something like this, I really don't want to go anywhere, you know? gray there too that worked out pretty good a little green I remember I have light coming down from this way so let least make sure I get some of the yellows in there More brown. All right. Yeah, he's coming out.
out more reddish than the original is, but I'm okay with that. Oh, well, thank you, Rachel. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> well, thank you. Oh, I got a little time yet. I had a half hour yet. Oh, sorry about rocking the camera. Oh, cool. Oh, thank you so much. That's my second super chat ever. <laughs> yeah, I and a couple some other things I do too. I mean, besides the needle felting, I'm not getting the dragons down now because they're set with a whole bunch of stuff, but like here I got the crystal earrings I was working on. Oops, I'm zoom back in. You really can't see them in this light too well. But just some uh, yellowed quartz and glass and then I've been playing with resin too because I've got some stuff to do resin stuff now. So just trying to make pendants and more things to work with. So yes, that's the small stuff I do. Needle felting's my big one though. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so along the belly here, I think that's where I'm gonna head next. Doesn't he have as many cracks there along the belly? Which is kind of surprising. I see where there's one big crack though, and I think I'm gonna add that one in. Yeah. I didn't realize I was gonna start having some left arm pain again here. Or a rotator cuff shoveling snow. Hey! That was not fun. So I'm going to have to add some more black in here to shade this, but that's. There's a crack right there for sure. Not that it's anything super spectacular uh, copying wise since there's so many of these dragons on the gate. And the scraping sound is not the brush. If you can hear that, that's my fingernail. Because I'm using my finger to guide my brush strokes. I'm gonna take a little liberty with the cracking there. There's another one right there that I saw in the picture. I do trees the same way. I just kind of randomly wiggle the brush around and stuff just happens. <laughs> it's the Bob Ross technique. <laughs> A little there too. Okay. So there looks like there's more. Oh, there's a good bit of damage on that one spot. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I still had to go shovel more, too. So it's like by the end of it all, I was in 
a good amount of pain. I am so tired of snow. I, Hubby and I are both tired of uh, shoveling snow. And he's got MS, so, you know, it's it's hard for him to walk sometimes and then you know we're both out there trying to shovel and we have a power shovel but it's gotten so deep that that doesn't do any good it's it's really bad a lot melted today but now I guess we're supposed to get a whole bunch more coming and it's like I can't I just have a break from it Just too much. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right, yeah. Good. Actually, that needs to be a little more gray. <laughs> Bob Ross, yeah. It was so funny is that, and I know I've said this in other live streams, but um, my mom and I used to watch Bob Ross quite a bit. And um, my mom is a very accomplished artist. She's done a lot, an awful lot. And uh, mainly Western paintings, you know, cowboy paintings and stuff like that. And... Um, we used to sit when Bob Ross aired on PBS back in the day and uh, you know he'd have this beautiful painting get started we watch his instructor too and I can't remember the guy's name anymore big kind of really overweight German guy that developed the wet on wet uh, painting technique that Bob Ross did and so um, uh, Bob would get this great background going and everything and then all of a sudden he'd take black and just put up this big thing for this tree right in front every time and so my mom would start start going no don't put the tree there no no don't put the tree there Bob and that kind of became our mantra it was just funny it was one of those things that you know good things about childhood that you remember, you know. <laughs> no, don't put the happy tree there. So yeah, Bob Ross was kind of like one of our uniting things between my mother and I, because she wouldn't let me watch her paint. Um, that was kind of a big no-no to her. She was afraid that it was going to influence me and so um, instead my high school art teacher that I had for eight years, because I had her in junior high school and high school, was like my biggest influence. And um, I kind of do a mixture of painting between the two of them. But those two fought like cats and dogs over me, I swear. And then the choir director would get in the middle of it because, you know, she wanted me staying in choir and I mean, just round and round and round. High school was entertaining. <laughs> More yellow again. I'm abusing these paints. Okay. I don't know. This originally was my Minecraft music list, so some of it sounds a little weird, that's why. Oscar? No.
I've never had a cat that has peeled paint right off of doors trying to, go to claw them. But, you know, with all those 24 claws that he's got, with his giant feet, there's a lot to claw paint off a door with. Now he wants mommy right now. Usually he's on camera too half the time because he gets into everything trying to, you know, he's got me captive, so he's expecting he's going to have cuddle time on camera and that's not happening. Okay. Yay, weird Minecraft mood music. <laughs> I'm lighten that up, up here too. That's a bit much. Okay. Oh, Seamus says hi to Oscar. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's where that crack is. All right, the scales are not really super noticeable down here. Okay, let's get put that in here. Was definitely a weird piece of music. Along there. Okay. Good. Oh, that's looking nice. That is looking very nice. Alright. Well, there's not a lot of scale detail down here, so I'm going to have to be very careful not to overdo it. where some of it has worn off quite a bit. these lines are actually are pretty dark in between the scales on these upper tiles and they're not right here back in just a little bit. Okay. That's actually looking really nice on camera too. Pretty happy with that. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> the 
music suddenly goes blah. <laughs> I'm going to try to get very little white here. Well, actually, no, because there isn't any highlight down there. Because that's low lighting down here. We'll just do this. Just give little hints. Now both arms are starting to hurt. And my wrists are feeling it. Ah. Yeah. Okay, I think I'm going to have to call it because I'm starting to get some really bad joint pain. All of a sudden. <sighs> but I've accomplished a lot today. We'll zoom back out. There he is. Let's zoom. Hold this camera up a little higher. I'm trying to get this thing to bend. <laughs> there he is. The Dragon of Marduk. I'm liking where he's going. All right. Well, thank you guys for popping in to say hi again. Thank you, Rachel, for the uh, the super chat. And um, thank you, Paranor. I'm glad you're back. Anybody watching this later, I will get my um, the links to my Discord and my Instagram below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share, you know, whatever. <laughs> so you guys have a fantastic night. Blessed be everyone. Hugs.